Sweden, Stockholm. I'm here to soak up the atmosphere of this historic Scandinavian city and get to the bottom of the thing they call the Nazional Dogs Galop. So what is it and where are we? We are in Stockholm, literally the Log Island. The city was established in 1252 by Burga Jarl as a fortified island defence against Baltic pirates. The Swedish capital is situated on 14 islands connected by 57 bridges. Since 1901, Stockholm has been the permanent host of the Nobel Prize ceremony here at the Svenska Akademien. Over 30% of the city is made up of waterways, so no matter where you happen to find yourself, water will be close by. On Stockholm's shortest day, the capital sees sunlight for a mere six hours, while on the longest day, it's light for 21 hours. Today, in early June, we can enjoy up to 18 hours of glorious sunshine. So that's Stockholm, but why are we here? The National Day of Sweden, Nationaldagen, is celebrated on the 6th of June to commemorate the crowning of King Gustav Vasa in 1523. And on the National Day, 2013, for the first time in 95 years, Svensk Gallup revived an age-old tradition of horse racing at Garde in the Royal National City Park. The Royal Jurgarden has been welcoming tens of thousands of race fans ever since. So, that's why we're here, but where are we staying? Here, at the Hotel Clarion Sign. There's a choice of bars, one downstairs, or... You could sup the cool drink in the rooftop bar, or... Take a dip in the heated rooftop pool. Well, that's where we're staying. Now, let's go racing. And before we experience the joys of the National Gallop, let's get a taste for Swedish racing at the capital's premier venue. 40 kilometres southwest of Stockholm's Arlanda Airport, Bro Park, Europe's newest race course, staged its first fixture on the 19th of June 2016. The site covers approximately 500 acres with permanent stabling and training facilities for 300 horses. Floodlights allow for racing on the dirt and the turf all year round. I'm stood on the impressive 2100 metre turf course and there's a 1900 metre dirt course on the inside. Scandinavia's most important fixture, the Swedish Festival of Racing, is staged here annually in September. And last year, Thundering Blue crossed this finishing line to take the Stockholm Cup. Thundering Blue, som har ridit väldigt spårsnålt hela loppet. Två Thundering Blue, Frank Perry vinner. It is also home to the newly named Women Jockeys World Cup, which last year saw a gallant performance from our very own Georgia Cox. Today at Bro, however, we have a midweek seven race card on the dirt. Race two proved successful for rising star of the Swedish racing scene, trainer Julian McLaren. Kygo, two love you, Vero, 27, will be a hero. Det är fyra Mr. Kygo som vinner. Julian McLaren, Bro Park, tränar Mr. Kygo. And after that victory for Julian, I discovered that he really is a local trainer. How far away are you, you based from here? My stable? Yes. It's about 300 metres behind us. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so th this is home? This is my home track, yeah. Last year we had the uh, had Thundering Blue coming over it and, and uh, I mean, of course, Clyde Washburn, he really <laughs> put it out there on the map. If anyone out there wants to come and party with me, I will be paying for the night. And I don't care if 300 of you come, we are going berserk. And he said, I'll be back every year now with different horses. So. And I just hope that we can have more competition co going on here, especially on the big days, because, to be fair, we have quite good prize money in Sweden. Well, that's the point. You've got excellent prize money. You've got great facilities. I suppose, but from your point of view, international runners make, make things harder from a personal perspective, but you want to see it, right? I want them to come. I want to take them on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, especially, I mean, I would recommend, if you have a filly that's good enough to run in a listed in UK or Ireland, bring it here, get the black type, it's much more easy to get a good black type here. No black type on offer today, but our caller, David, is group class in the commentary box. 
Den här öppnar de iväg, sist iväg Nio Bandola som tappar någon längd där. Det gör också nummer två Dutch Chart. Ett Wild Tobacco invändigt, utvändigt här kommer nummer två Dutch Chart. Två Dutch Chart ser ut att ha grepp för Carlos Lopez, åtta även i plats försöker två Dutch Chart vinner. Två Dutch Chart med Carlos Lopez. I'm a happy amateur, semi-professional, got another job like, but this is a really, really fun job and I, I do everything I could to be as professional as I can. So it's a small small sport. We we hope we will will grow a lot but well if I could do this for full time I would I would. And those big days they they must be what you, you get most excited about. There's such big days here in Sweden. Yeah 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 the Stockholm Cup and uh, Thundering Blue as came, uh, he came yes last year and he made a tremendous performance great calling those races. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, to it already. I hope I see him again. And we'll be seeing David again tomorrow at the National Gallop. But for now, let's hear from Dennis Madsen from Svensk Gallop, who outlined his vision for Swedish racing and Bro Park. It's still a, a racetrack that is developing all the time. We are refurnishing the parade ring and things are happening all the time. And we, we want to create good Swedish racing, but also an international flair, which we have done with a female uh, Juggers tournament and uh, with, with the Stockholm Cup International Day, where we brought over uh, eight horses from, from the UK. What are the incentives other than winning a race here? But, 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 but what is, if there's any international trainers sat at home or owners contemplating it. Well, what is the reason you would say the best reason to, to bring their horses over here to Sweden? Of course, it's competitive racing and our international ra meeting uh, is, is very good prep or stepping stone for uh, an American uh, um, agenda like Thundering Blue who went uh, went away to the uh, Canada, Canada International mm -hmm. and, and finish second there or even uh, our dirt racing is uh, resembles much more dirt racing in America than your polytrack or artificial surfaces in, in the UK. And we've seen actually that, that, that Swedish horses had success at the Dubai Carnival. Uh, there's no reason that horses that may want to go and race out there why they can't come over here and, and take in the dirt track as well because it, it, it success is akin between the two. Absolutely I think they would learn a lot about their horses on a sand based dirt track uh, that they wouldn't get at home. Uh, and obviously we had a horse called Eikirk who won in, in Dubai this uh, this winter and that was enormous for, for Swedish racing. Yeah, to great scenes as well, it was it was a, a pleasure being there. And important to you to have a, to be able to provide a dirt and a turf track as well for options for connections, be they international or local. Absolutely, uh, as you know, well know, our weather's not too sunny all year round. So we have uh, racing into December and start in, in March. So. We need, we need the dirt track. And what you can expect also from Sweden, uh, Stockholm is a, a, like the capital of Sweden, obviously, and a really nice place to, to walk around. So you could bring owners here, have a runner on the Sunday, but also have a great weekend out in, in one of the beautiful uh, city of Europe. And Bro Park have teamed up with Goodwood Racecourse to give trainers and owners the chance to enjoy that beautiful city. Bro has already run qualifying races for the Qatar Goodwood Festival and three races at the festival will earn free travel and entry to Bro's Stockholm International Meeting. For now though, our focus is on tomorrow's big event, the National Gallop. We really bring the sport to the people here in Sweden. I mean, we're talking about a normal day like this today. We could have, I would say, 500 people coming here looking. Tomorrow we will have 50,000 people at the track. And we bring, really bring the sport into the center of Stockholm, to the heart of Stockholm. And they stand all the way around the track, on the backside, around the bends, and everybody's cheering, even though they've never seen a racehorse before. But they share it because it, they think it's the best sport. We bring it to them. And they just feel the adrenaline pumping themselves. So they get into the race as well. And then they may, might have a small bet or whatever. And, yeah, it's just a great atmosphere on that day. But before we get to the Royal Year Garden and the National Gallop, it's back to the hotel to find out a little bit more of what Stockholm has to offer. General Manager Henrik has the lowdown. Henry, by the looks of things, the, the rooftop bar here at the Clarin is the, is the place to be. It's a very popular place. Yeah, I would say that rooftop bars in Stockholm is popular as such, but I think the Clarion one, this rooftop garden bar, is super popular, especially when the sun shines. And <laughs> for people wanting to come out and, and, and enjoy the racing and tie it in with a city break like this, yeah. it works really well. Yeah. 
Uh, there's, there's options for, for people to go racing and there's a lot for them to do around the, the city of Stockholm as well. Yeah, Stockholm is known a little bit like the Venice of the north. You have all the canals here, the, the city is built around 14 islands and in the archipelago we have 30,000 islands, so it's a really, really water city, so to say. And then you have the Vasa Museum, the 1700-year uh, warship that is more or less 100% preserved. Uh, we got Old Town with the castle and stuff like that. So if you want to do a city tour and combine it with the race, it's a great opportunity. Tomorrow morning, if we're exploring, what should I do tomorrow morning, Henry? What's, I think, a, what's a good thing to do here? I think you should visit Old Town. Yeah. I think that's really, really to get, grab a coffee and then you take a walk down to the Old Town, have a look at the Grand Hotel and, and the big royal castle and so on. That's really, really uh, nice. It's a deal. I'm yeah. going to hold you You're going to do that? It's lovely to you see send this. me a picture. Yeah, <laughs> I will, great. yeah. I'll send, you, I'll send you a picture somehow. I'll WhatsApp I mean, you nice. a picture. Yeah? Uh, great, thanks so much. It's great. lovely to see the hotel as well. It's a pleasure to stay oh, here. Thank you for staying with us. Good man. Thank you. And after the bar, what better way to line the stomach than a visit to Kitchen and Table, the hotel restaurant. Anna has sorted me out a little snack. I'm very excited about this, Anna. Yes. Next to me. Is there a feast in front of us? Definitely. Is, is this a sort of good example of the food that kitchen and table do here a nice different variety of things oh, good. i think it's very good three options here vegetarian a fish dish with salmon of course and uh steak would you say that the the stockholmers and, and, and swedish people are quite healthy when it comes to food yeah they are quite they're quite uh quite, quite conscious of that. yes it's more like green alternative you, you go for a uh, French, salad. Instead. French fries are allowed. I do, it's definitely allowed. But that tastes <laughs> oh, yeah. healthy and is and absolutely delicious. Oh, good. It seems like a really popular place to come and dine. Is yeah. it popular with, with non hotel residents as definitely, well? Definitely, yeah. In the evenings like this, a lot of locals come by. It's a very trendy and very popular restaurant. It seems it. I'm yeah. not going to embarrass myself, but when the camera stops rolling, I'm going to finish that, then I'm going to go for the fish, and then I'm going to finish up with the steak. Very oh, good. And then I'm I'll be happy. set up for the day. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. And so, suitably refreshed, it's time to head to the Royal Jurgarden. It's June the 6th, and in Stockholm that means one thing. Sverige Nationaldag, the National Day of Sweden. Welcome to the Royal Jurgarden. It's the first national park in the world, and the venue for Swedish National Day celebrations every 6th of June. And what better way to celebrate than to stage a race meeting? So here we are at the first event of the National Dogs Galopen. It is Pony Lop 1. That is the first of the pony races. Erik är bra med åtta ekskogens hejs har lite att ta igen. Det gäller också två Lucky Light. Men det är nummer sex, Kidskogens Gossi som vinner. The man behind this impressive day is Svensk Galopp CEO Fredrik Rocherskold. Bridget, what a day. The, the, the sun is out, there are so many people here. Just, just tell us what this day is all about. This, this day is, is not for the quality racing. This is for show the Swedish people that uh, thoroughbred racing ex exists, you know. And we, have, we are in the middle, in the heart of Stockholm, the best location we can ever find. And today it will be more than 50,000 people here. So it's amazing. And in reality, if you try to get that amount of people to to Bro Park, that wouldn't necessarily happen, would it? But you can get them here in the heart of, of Stockholm to watch to watch thoroughbred racing. Yeah, hopefully some of the people here comes for our our big days uh, on Bro Park. That's the, that's uh, my goal anyway. And then to to have a to have a nice event. Uh, the, this is what's all about for the family. And there's plenty going on away from the horse racing here as well. I mean, as you say, it's, it's not just about the horse no, racing. No. This is a national day. Yeah, that yeah. It's a wonderful part of it, the horse racing, but there's a lot going on elsewhere. Yeah, a lot. And we have, you know, good artists on the stage singing. And so we have everything for, a uh, little bit for everyone. How much of this is part of the future of, of Swedish thoroughbred racing? To be able to get people here interested in the, the sport of thoroughbred racing and then them to be able to, to sort of cross that divide into showing regular interest in it. Is that what it is all about? It is, it is and that's uh, that's the difficult thing but we have seen that we have our uh, crowd has, has gone up in Bro Park 
since we have this. So I think some of the people will notice that this sport exists. Uh, we are blessed with the weather, but if you put a figure on how many people you'd like to have come today and, and seen all these horses race, what are we what are we thinking? I know we're at the start of the day now, but but what are you expecting through the through the today, gates today? today uh, it's a free entrance event, so it's a little bit hard to count, but I think it will be 50,000 plus. That could only be a fantastic thing for people watching mm. racing, right? Mm. Albeit they're in the middle of mm. Stockholm, that, that could only be good for, for thoroughbred racing. Of course, and we, 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 uh, we uh, are also in national TV, two, two and a half hours live. So this is, uh, this is a big thing. And the live thoroughbred action kicks off with a five-runner, 2,750-metre contest. They've got to cheer every time they come round. I love this. I'm going to go and cheer the winner in now, because I think it's about to finish. Oh, they're racing now. Oh, there we go, outside. That's a belting first race. So aside from the racing to my right, which happens out on track, there's plenty to get on with. There's drinks behind me that you can have. You, you've got lots of uh, food vans. You can have a little bet on the Swedish tote, always important. Fun zone for the kids, down the bottom there. Go drive a digger. Lots to get on with at the National Nags Galoppen. In amongst the crowd, I've found David from the Clarion Hotel sign, where we stayed and had a, a wonderful a meal and, and, and stay last night and then here we are today not too far away. I'm glad you enjoyed the stay. This is Stockholm's largest hotel and uh, we're happy to have you there. Now look we come racing today yeah. um, which is a, a really unique day's racing to be honest. We're in the middle of this park um, we, we felt like we only hopped in the, the taxi from the hotel uh, within 10 minutes we were here yeah. but at this very unique venue. Uh, it's a very unique venue and normally it's nothing here so it's just a park and uh, so they build this one this race up for, for just one day which is amazing. And and really to embrace what it feels there's a lot of national pride here today because it is national it, day. It is our national day and uh, people are happy we don't celebrate it so much here in Sweden like to do in Norway for example but uh, no this is a this is a good way of celebrating our national day. How much of a sort of a, a, a tradition is this here? How much is it ringed in the diary that people are going to come here and enjoy well, this Well I mean day? there's 50,000 people here it probably ringed in in, in, uh, in, in 50,000 people's diary. I mean, we, we're not on the level that you are in, in England for, for racing, but uh, uh, this is uh, we're we're going we're coming there. And watch your back. By the same, but by the same token, we're not on a level to do anything like this. The thought of putting something like this in Hyde Park seems so far removed from what we would normally do. Yeah, yes, and uh, and you, but you are on another level, and this is uh, I mean, this is for for everyone is here, uh, every single one of them from all level of society, and uh, I mean, th this is a great this is a great uh, uh, festival. That festival feeling is hard to avoid, with plenty of events to keep the family happy, including the Match Your Dog competition. Now there is a, a look like your dog competition. I don't know the Swedish for that. Now I thought you might help, but you're originally from England as well, yeah, and yeah. I can see that you have clearly come dressed as your dog. Who is? <laughs> Rosie, her name's Rosie. And where, t tell me about your how you've come to, to be here in Stockholm, in this park, competing in this competition. Oh goodness, well my wife's a burlesque performer, and we have run burlesque clubs and things, so we have things like this all around the house. <laughs> and Rosie, we've only had for, for, for like a couple of months, she's now six months old. And so Rosie's like a burlesque dog. So she joins in life with us, yeah. Rosie, congratulations on that. She's enjoying every second she of it, I think. It. She loves it. Now, yeah. it, since you've been out here, you say you've been out here over a decade, have you? What, 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 yeah, I've been here 14 years. What, 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 is, what is it about this day in particular, in comparison to perhaps your experiences when you, when you were in England? Because there's nothing really that I can relate to back home about this sort of day. Not, not in that kind of generous way. What I like here is it's more social. Yeah, this is really a kind of coming together of people. And it, of course it's National Day, but it's not about nationalism. It's more about a kind of, I think, uh, a kind of a group identity, you know. And we're here on horse racing terms, but yeah. and I know that's not why everyone comes, but to have thoroughbred racing in the middle of yeah, the park, that's unbelievable it's stuff. Yeah. This is about, like, people. Yeah. <laughs> I hear your wife is also dressed similarly. Have you yes, got another dog is. with your wife? No, no, no. Okay. My, my, she's, got a, she's got a parrot on her head. The blue and yellow parrot. I can see, you, were, you wouldn't miss that. Um, I'm Thank glad you, you had a great day. And Rosie, thank, yeah. hopefully this isn't your last TV appearance, Rosie. No, well I'm done. sure it won't be. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thanks very much. I love it, you've got 
families in their thousands, you've got your kids, they bring their dogs, there's no dress code, you can wear what you like. You basically come to the National Park on a beautiful day, you have loads of fun, you get right up close to some horse races, some tight finishes as well. And this is the, when they're entering the home straight, this is when they start to really enjoy it. Kids running down to the rail to see it. And another tight finish, perfect. The family fun keeps coming, and next up, they're racing over 100 metres. So they're just about to start the hobby horse race, it's big in Scandinavia. And they've loaded them into the stalls, which I love. And uh, I think it's 100 metres at this hobby horse race. So the stalls will open, and hopefully the, the contestants on their hobby horses will burst out and provide us with a very exciting race. I've been looking forward to this all day. I think it's one or two, I think there are two here. One of them might be playing up in the stalls. No, they're off, we're away, here we go. The crowd are gathered on the rail to, to watch this, and this is genuinely one of the highlights of the day. I don't know how strict they are on what's running and what's galloping. I'm not sure of the... I mean, your man in front's just charging. There we are. Hobby horse race one done. We step up in grade for the next with two familiar faces taking part in the Ladies IFAR Cup. Now race number five, the Ladies IFAR Cup is underway. It is for female riders from eight different countries, includes Sophie Ralston from Ireland and Rachel Neller from Great Britain, both in blue and yellow colours. And we'll be wishing them all the very best. We're about to see him. Oh, it's going to be tight. Go on. Go on, push. Oh, she's second. She had her Irish flag tucked away as well. But she can still get it out and wave it. Uh, but uh, second for Sophie Rawls to run up. A great effort from both of our girls there, just touched off by the local challenger from Sweden. Rachel and Sophie alongside me, it's just finished. Um, first of all, how was that? An experience. <laughs> but, 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 but good fun, I mean different, something like you've, I suppose you've not really ridden around a national park in a, in a race before, have you? No, I mean, I came here three years ago, but they didn't have the crowds that they had then. And um, there's people everywhere and that didn't really play to my favour because my horse was quite lit up and it, with it being a two mile race I struggled to settle him so he's finished like completely emptied on me and finished fourth so I was disappointed but the whole day as an experience it's just it's, it's brilliant it's like their royal ascot isn't it well there are so many people here they love it as well the, with the first couple of times you came around everyone starts going mad um, the locals will be happy because the Swedish girl won it and Sophie you finished second so you must be delighted. Yeah, yeah I'm delighted with the second. I think I never would have caught her even though I got carried across the track a little bit. She was always going a little bit better than me. Every time I got to her horse it'd go again so I'm not disappointed. It was great to come second. And I suppose good fun to be out here, the two of you be out riding together as well. You clearly chose to be upsides each other in the race did you? Yeah we had that all planned. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, well, Sophie was told to sit between second and fourth, and I was told to get cover, and my lad being so keen and jumping so well, I was closer than I wanted to be. But it was nice to have Sophie upside to me, because she was helping me out and dropping back when I needed her to, and we're working as a team out there. <laughs> I did feel there was clear team tactics going on, but look, no, it was, it was great to see you out there, and I suppose the day is about, it's about fun, isn't it? And it's about coming out here and experiencing this, less so about about winning for all that you're competitive people. I mean, did it, did it feel between you and all of you very very competitive or not really? Not really, no. It was more friendly and we're happy to be around each other. I'm really happy for the Swedish girl to have won it because the crowd went wild for her. Like, they're really happy for her. So, no, it's, you know, we don't mind where we finish. We did all want to see the Irish flag get it. I, I, I saw you brought that, get it out, get, get that waving. I, I, had it, I had it prepped and she I was hoping herself. to hold it up. Maybe I did jinx myself. That's it, exactly. <laughs> what's, the, what's the few days been like? Oh, it's been great. I mean, obviously we both work in racing. I work for Ed Raw for 
um, Ed Walker, Ed Walker, and Sophie works for Dean Ivory. So it's difficult for us to get the time off this time of the season. But we we had yesterday here. We got here early in the morning. We did our sightseeing yesterday, and then we both fly back tonight because we're both racing tomorrow. So we feel like we've had a little bit of a mini break and seeing what we've got to see. And then we've been here racing today. So it's been it's been nice. It's a whistle stop tour, isn't it? But it, it really is quite a unique experience as far as putting this day on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's incredible. Like fair play to them, and the horses are really well cared for. There's buckets of water dotted around for them. They had water down at the start. They were throwing bottles of water over the horses. Like it's super. Fair play to them. It's warm, isn't it? Oh, it's really warm. I love the hot weather, but this is this has been a challenge riding in this today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's always like this, but it's been it's been a great day. Uh, well done to you both. Great to chat to you, and uh, we'll chat to you again soon. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Back in the winner's enclosure, a very popular local winner in Ulrika Holmquist, who went on to win four of the six races on the day. Lara Sawaya is the representative of Sheikh Mansour, who sponsors the ladies' race series as well as the day's pony races. We have always selected this day from the years because it has around 50,000 people watching us and, you know, they love the Arabian horse racing and they love the pony races and from here uh, we got the permission from His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed and his initiatives to start Sheikh al and Mansour bin Zayed International Pony Race. It's from Sweden. So it's growing? Yes, sure. It's fantastic to see as well. Laura, thanks for your time. We hope you have a great day. Thank you so much. A fantastic day is drawing to a close and it's been a busy one for local broadcaster Josephine Sheen. Uh, we're getting to the end of what's been a, a very hot lovely day i say that it's been, it's been a brilliant thing um and we've really enjoyed the racing as well josephine racing broadcaster alongside me it's great to to have that tv presence here as well it's such a big day yeah we're we're live on national tv here in sweden and for us it's a big big thing because horse racing uh, is very very small in this country you know trotting is the big thing here so for once we are number one on tv so uh, it's excellent Do you know you, you hit on something there that I, I really i didn't know before i came here um as somebody that has has been and around um, Swedish thoroughbred racing um, in, in different parts of the world, Dubai as well. I didn't realise where trotting fit in. I mean, it, it, that is such a big sport over here, and thoroughbred racing feels as though it, it's still got some steps to make to catch it up. Yeah, it's uh, it's we're a very long way away, but we are catching up slowly, surely but slowly, and. Uh, it feels really great. The, the thing is, trotting is a, a very a sport that is very easy to to connect with because it's very family orientated and and they. I think the Swedish people think the the horse racing is a bit snobbish, but that's not the case. But that's not, the, in I all seriousness, the feel here today is nothing like. I know, that. I know, and this is what we want to show to everybody, and it, it's a great thing to be here in the middle of Stockholm. I mean, come on. Where does this race fit in on the other days that, that, that you broadcast with regard to, to thoroughbred racing? It, how different a, a day is it and how important is it? This is a very important day. I mean, this is what we're building up on up onto uh, because Nationalos Galopen, as it's called in Sweden, it's a, you know, it's our national day as well. You know, it's a 6th of June. And uh, of course, everybody wants to be here because it's it's massive and it grown so big over the years we have 50,000 people here coming today so it's a huge day for us maybe not the racing is handicap races is not the biggest races but we want to promote racing the best way we can and then try to get these people to come out to the race course particularly as the the races build over the next few months um, culminating in that, that, that big day at, at, at Bro Park. If you if you can keep get, getting people coming racing and, and seeing how much fun they have here, I suppose the, the transition is then to get them to come to the to the racetrack itself. Of course, and we the 16th of June we have uh, um, Stockholm Stora Pris, uh, which is a very big day, and that's family oriented as well, so we try to get these people over there. And then of course we have uh, Women's Jockey World Cup coming up, and then after that Stockholm Cup. So some big international fixtures on the horizon, but for now, our time in Stockholm is nearing its end. The last race is coming to a close. That is it for a beautiful day's racing, and the crowd are cheering this one louder than any other. It's not been just about the racing, there's been plenty more besides, but what a day in a park to enjoy some horse racing. It's been brilliant.